And let me preface this and give y'all the disclaimer. This is for women. How many women we got in here? All women. Okay. So don't wonder, don't bring up men in your minds and wonder and make it look like this is lobster. I have a whole 10 things for men. The opposite of this message, well, not the opposite, but the male version. I have a male version of both of them. 10 things and another 10 things. So don't you feel like I'm slighting you. I do it to the men too. Don't get uncomfortable and don't, yeah, don't un, uh, release the cracking <laughs> because you think I'm <laughs> being chauvinistic because I'm not. I'm, I'm a scripture believer. I can show it to you in scripture. And that's what I believe. I believe what's written. So uh, this particular message, we're going to talk about 10 things, five things you should always tell your husband, five things you should never say to your husband. And I'm doing these uh, even though we have singles in here. Because singles, man, if you can learn it now, oh, you won't have to go home tonight and apologize. <laughs> Amen. You won't have to go home and Amen. Don't have to go in the bathroom and rebuke yourself. <laughs> yeah, so you can get it now. If you can prepare, man, you know, the quicker you get yourself together, boy, the quicker somebody going to notice you. That's the thing people don't realize. All this old, you know, Instagram and the Internet and all that, they have just, it's messed up courtships, period. Because everybody goes on there to find out stuff, see pictures, see all this, and they've totally left the whole natural pheromone thing out where you just attract a dude and it's not even all looks it's just you just attract them just some stuff can't even be explained but it cuts all of that out hey man your husband noticed you in a crowd yep just saw you and it was something about you you didn't look no better than anybody else in there it was just something about you I'm just being honest. The, the, the world, they're cutting all of that out. They don't want that natural progression. They want you to pick online and then on the dating site. And you know that picture is old. <laughs> you ain't looked like that in years. Then it's just the nose up. <laughs> Filters. <laughs> you got so many filters, your phone running slow. All the filters on your bitches. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we got to go back to the way God designed this thing. And um, amen. Most folks would be married. I promise you that. Amen. So, let's get into this. Are we good to go? I see three red lights, so that means we're good. Okay. Ten things. Look at somebody say ten things. ten things. All right. Psalms 128 and 3 says, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Ooh. Don't that sound beautiful? Oh, if you could only be that. <laughs> Look at that house. Oh. Amen. That beautiful vine. That's a lot of beautiful vines, but man, it take a lot of maintenance to keep that together. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> but thy wife, this is a psalm saying, thy wife shall be a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Okay, five things to always tell your husband or your future husband. Amen? Five things. Look at somebody say five things. Y'all ready? <laughs> Always tell your husband, you are glad he found you. Amen. Amen? Always tell him. Don't tell him you found him. Because that's not biblical. Even if you did, that's not biblical. <laughs> Don't let him know how you conjured 
none of that. None of that. Now, you're not like that anymore. You don't use them crystals no more. That's, you put those up. God has redeemed you. You don't burn sage no more. But you are glad he found you. That's something you have to always tell him. Just walk up to him one day and just tell him, I'm glad you found me. Because the Bible said in Proverbs 11, I mean 18 and 22, whoso findeth a wife, findeth a what? A good thing. So if you weren't found, you're not a good thing. So, amen. He needs to find you. Amen. I said amen. All right. So you let him know, I'm glad you found me. I don't care how you met. Like you could have walked up to him or whatever, whatever, but just because he's the man, he found you. And you give him that. Hey Amen. I can't stand folk, women that always got to take credit for everything. Man, you found a good wife. Well, see, the, what really happened was I was, you know, it was really me. And I just like, oh, well, maybe you didn't find a good thing. <laughs> found an old sour thing. But if you, <laughs> but you should always let him know that you're glad he found you. That means a lot to men. It really does. Number two, you should always tell him that you were created for him. No other, there's no other reason you're alive. You need to let him know that. <laughs> yeah. No other reason. Man, I'm here for you. My wife has always said that. And I appreciate it. I didn't tell her to say that. She just always said she feels like she was created for me to be with me through this journey. And you should always let them know that's, that's why you were created. Amen, women? Amen. That's okay, right? You can do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm created for you. Let him know, Genesis 2 and 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Ye shall be called woe man, because she was taken out of man. You know, the old folks used to say uh, he named a woe man because when, a woman because when God started messing with his rib, he said, whoa, man. <laughs> That wasn't funny. Okay. But you let him know this is why I was created. That's why if, if you have a career, you don't put your career over him. If you, amen. If you have a job, if you have a talent or an ability, maybe you can sing, maybe you can draw. Whatever you can do, you don't want to put that over him. You want him to feel like he has something to do with that. You better keep him significant. Don't be trying to hit him out and act like you don't need him. You were created for him. Let him know that. Amen? Now that takes some self-denial. Then you got to deny all the prophecies and everything else folks told you you was gonna be a great something something then you had kids well now you got to be a great mother yeah. amen oh i can't wait to upload this on the internet yeah you got to be a great mother now mm -hmm. yeah i mean why are you having kids and you don't want to be good at it <laughs> Don't have them. So you have to let him know that you were created for him. Number three, ooh. You got to always tell him that you couldn't make it without him. Oh, some of y'all looking so lost. But I can't. Tell him that you can't make it without him. Because really you can't. 
Amen. Come on, let me get some old school claps. This new stuff, these new folks, I don't know. I just don't know. But, yeah, he, you, he has to feel like he is responsible for something. That's how men, that's what we were created for. So anything short of that takes away from our purpose. So you got to let him know that you can't make it without him. Tough room. <laughs> That's because it's October. It's a lot of witchcraft. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 7 and 34. There is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Single women. You're supposed to be caring for the things of the Lord that you may be holy both in body. Yeah, that's internet photos. In body and in, you got to be holy in body. Watch what you uploading, single women. And in spirit. Amen. Now, ain't no man want an old gossiping, bitter, sour puss. Find something wrong with everybody, always talking and jawing, gossiping, creeping, and, <laughs> and having sex. You got to be holy in body. And if you're having sex, you don't need no husband. You got one, whoever you're sleeping with. That seed is taken. How's God going to bless you with somebody and you giving it up? I'm just going to be. Man, I'd stay on that if my arm wasn't numb from my workout earlier. But you <laughs> got to get through this. So I won't be able to advance the slides. The devil will win. But you got to, <laughs> you got to, you got to know. You got to be holy in body and in spirit. So he says the un, look at somebody say unmarried woman. This is the single women. We should make y'all all sit together. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married carried for the things of the world, how she may what? That is your concern if you're married. You should be worried about how you may please. Your husband. <laughs> and it just sounds like ancient history in 2021. Because the Jezebel witch spirit. Oh, there's so many witches in the land. Jezebel spirit. So witchcraft is, you know, it's, it's just running rampant. And we ain't worried about it. We gonna be in here. Now come on in here, witch. Come on in here and get this word, because the word is going to go forth. Amen. We'll lay hands on you and watch you slither like a snake right on out the exit door. Amen. We got something for you in here. Ain't nobody scared of no old hocus pocus. Get on your broom and go back and boss your husband around. <laughs> But you know, God has just assured me that they are doing us a favor. Yeah, they are doing us a favor because they are keeping the jazzies in here activated. They can't hide. So you can't hide when the spirit is brewing and churning. You can't. They gonna manifest. Yeah. Then the old weak husband gonna leave. So they're actually doing us a favor. They're keeping us, keeping the house clean. Amen. They like a bug zapper. Every now and then we hear, it's another one gone. Remember that? Yeah. Get them on out of here. But the unmarried woman careth for things of the Lord, but the married woman careth on how she may please her husband. 
oh, well, I don't get to read the word like I want to. I don't get to spend time with the Lord or whatever. Don't you know you please the Lord by pleasing your husband? Yeah, yeah, and you can find time, man. You find time to shop online. <laughs> Leave the house all up at Quick Lots. <laughs> oh, I know you all been in Quick Lots. I heard new truck come every two days because <laughs> my wife is in there. <laughs> yeah, you find time to do what you want to do, so you can find time to talk to the Lord. But God wants you to talk to your husband and find a way to please him. Find a way how she may please her husband. Number four five th- of the five things, you got to always tell your husband you'd rather be with him than be single. Some of y'all is, amen. Some of y'all have said just the opposite. I mean, you said Word for word, the opposite. I would rather be single than with him. And you can't tell other people that. I don't care if you feel in some kind of way and wilding or whatever. You can't tell other people that because eventually you get bad enough. You're going to say it. Rather be single. What was you doing single? You forgot. You forgot how whack your single life was. I'd rather be single. No, you wouldn't. Especially now, kids and stuff. Discounted on the discount aisle. Clearance. You in the clearance. What you talking about? I'll get these kids. I'll leave you and go where? Where you going? Better drive around the block and come back. Where are you going? It's not too late for me. Yes, it is. Stay right there. Amen. Because see, if you're doing ugly stuff like that, God ain't gonna bless you with nobody. Hey. Amen. I ain't talking about, you know, if you've been single or if you, you know, if it's remarriage, whatever it is, I'm not talking about that. God will give you a special grace for that. If things are done the right way. But you talk, I just, boy, I pack up, I'll get my stuff. I'm, okay. I tell men all the time, call that bluff, please. Call it. But let me out of this car. I know we on the mix master, but let me out right now. Skirt! What you say? You look, o- you look over that ledge. Um, you better drive up some more. I, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you said let you out. <laughs> but he needs to know <laughs> that you <laughs> would rather be with him than be single. Amen. Amen. And don't be thinking about it. Oh, well. <laughs> what? No, no, man. Your life is better. Amen. And your life has the potential to be even better when the two come together and agree. Genesis 2 and 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his what? Oh, that's in the men's version of this. You got to leave that mother. Now you can't make him leave his mama. You got to pray for his mama to Amen. You have to pray that. See, that's the thing. See, we believe in witchcraft and getting manipulated. And, oh, what is this? I feel something stab me in the back. It's some spiritual going on. We believe it all when the witchcraft is on us, but we don't understand. We have power in our prayers. You can pray stuff away. You can pray people away. Now, you don't want to pray his mother completely away. Just away enough to not be in y'all's business. Amen. God just draw a line. I don't want nothing to happen to her. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak that. I don't want nothing to happen to her. I don't say it. I don't want nothing to happen to her. You don't want nothing to happen to her. You want her heart to change. You want her to change. 
change in Jesus name change change your Lord yeah yeah so you don't want nothing bad to happen but you do want her to change so therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and that's the one of the I mean biggest problems with marriages is they can't cleave because somebody's in the way father mother somebody's opinions and the child or whoever whichever one is holding the opinion of their parents in too high of a regard you got to realize you have your own family now amen so you you, you can't <laughs> you don't need a counselor in the mother and the father it's good to have somebody to talk to but your personal business shouldn't even leave your house Amen. My mama don't know nothing about what's going on in my house, and my wife's mama don't know nothing. She don't, that we, don't, we don't talk about that. That's between us. Amen. That's for us to work out and for us to decide what we're going to do. And you have to do that. That's the only way you're going to stay together when you cleave like that. But you'd rather be with him than be single. You got to make sure that you always tell him that. You know, when I was single, I was so lonely. Since you came, man, that has changed. Let him know. That's when the roses show up in the kitchen and candy and date night. Yeah, girl, you want to go get your hair done, girl, I don't care. Go to them Africans that'll do them braids over about five of them. You know that costs hundreds of dollars. Go on, girl. Go on, let them do it. Amen. And don't let them pray over your head now. You know? you know, don't come back with your head spinning around. I just want the hair done. It's, but yeah, just you, you get, you know, he just looks at you totally different. He'll be on his job. He'll be somewhere. Can't wait to get home. You don't have to call. Where, where are you? <laughs> I stopped by a bar because I needed a drink. Yeah, you don't even want to come home. You're just too strong for it. Don't you let this world make you a strong, independent woman. God didn't create that. That's nowhere in scripture. He didn't use no woman like that. Not one. That's out of character. And that'll break your body down. You get sick behind that foolishness. Number five. Ooh, let me rush through this. Man, I'm just on five. No other man can ever take his place. He needs to know that. Amen. He don't need to walk in and you watching Morris Chestnut every time he leaves the house. A Morris Chestnut film. Why is Morris Chestnut every time? And you know he ain't built like Morris Chestnut. He's just built like a chestnut. <laughs> so you need to let him know. This right here, baby. See, I'm watching this. This right here, this is just fiction. I don't want this. That's just a movie. That's Hollywood. That's makeup and camera tricks. He probably don't even look like that. Try to fix it. He probably don't even look like that for real. In real life. But you need to let <laughs> You need to let him know no man, not even Morris Chestnut, can ever take his place. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she what? It's in the Bible. Did we just read it? So the man has to make sure that he loves his wife as himself. He didn't tell you to love him as yourself. He told you to reverence him. 
make him feel special like he's somebody and he should be somebody to you amen hey some of y'all prayed that prayer for years God just give them to me. Oh, Lord, I reverence him. Oh, gosh. Oh, I just. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then you got him. <laughs> when I'm going to get some reverence. Oh, I wish God had a rewind button. Sit you down and play back your prayers. Oh, God, I don't care what he look like, what he driving. Oh, God, I don't care. Just send him on down, Lord. Send him on down, send him on down. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she what? Man, I need y'all to get this. Reverence her husband. Proverbs 21 and 19. This some of y'all. You did this on your way here. I mean, look at his shoe. Yeah. He is totally in fear. He is in fear. Proverbs 21 and 19. It is better to live alone in the desert. Alone in the desert? Did you hear that? Uh, there's no water in the desert. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be there long. Not in the desert, alone. But it's better to be alone in the desert, desert, than with a discontent, complaining witch, I mean wife. I just, I mean, they tell me, I hear the stories, they tell me, they tell me the stories, they call me, Pastors, bishops, big folk, famous folk, whatever, they tell me, and I just can't, my mind just won't understand because I just don't have that. So I don't have that in my house. My wife has never been like that. I just don't understand. I, 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 I sympathize, but man, uh. but if you act like this, you need to get yourself under control. Amen. Some of you got convicted. And when I made the joke about his shoe, you couldn't even laugh. Because there's a fist mark on your table. I mean, she done indented the table. Look at it. The legs are sticking out. Yeah. And anytime you're acting like this, 9.95 times out of 10, it's an issue in you. There is something that happened to you that has little to do with him. Five things to, look at somebody and say never. 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 How long is never? Five things to never. I put it in bold and then put a little smoke behind it. Five things to never tell your husband. Five things. One, you're not attracted to him anymore. See, that's New World Order, the whole attraction thing. Because in the Bible days, it, it didn't exist. People didn't even have opportunity to be attracted to someone. Your attraction to someone is based off previous lust. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear this. I'm not attracted to... Uh, what? Attracted? How you know what attraction is had you not been attracted to someone else lustfully? That's where that comes from. Amen? Because you can fall in love with anybody. But your mind, what you've watched, what you indulge in, all those things have created a image that you are turned on by and that's what you're looking for I know I'm preaching 
And most of the time when you have that image, no one will ever live up to it. You'll never find that image. And you're just going to grow old without anyone. Yeah, because you didn't take a chance on the ones that didn't fit that image. So give that up. Amen. Take that paper you got where you wrote down all the stuff that you want him to be. Burn it. That's witchcraft. Because you can't decide that. And if you do decide it, you weren't found. You found what was on that paper. I preach in here, I don't care. So never tell him, I ain't attracted to you no more. What is that? You're attracted to somebody. So did he get replaced with Morris Chestnut? You better quit watching all them Christmas specials. Get it off the T.D. Jakes channel. You know him and Tyler Perry going to have me in church off. Always off. Just always out. It's in his name. So you are not attracted, you don't tell him <laughs> that you are not attracted to him anymore. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. Now concerning the things whereunto ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own what? Wife. wife and let every woman have her own what? Husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benev benevolence. Do benevolence. Let the husband give his wife some when it's due. And likewise also, <laughs> that sounded so Baptist. And likewise also, <laughs> the wife give her due benevolence unto the husband. Amen. You don't be getting mad and withholding to punish. That should be punishment to you. I mean, you must not like it very much to be using it as a, to, to weaponize it. You're weaponizing it. <laughs> We're going to have to rate this message. I'll put a PG-13 in front of it. Yeah. But the wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband hath not power of his body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, and make that time short, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and praying, and come together again. So that what? Satan tempt you not. Amen. And let the church say. I mean, the word will preach about everything. And it's right here. So forget that whole attractive thing and stop having f singles, stop having physical relationships with people because that's what's building up that whole physical desire where you feel you're not attracted. And women, stop watching stuff you shouldn't watch and listening to music you shouldn't listen to because that's also doing the same thing. Amen. Amen. You listening to... I can't even think of no artist now. I don't know these new ones. But just uh, some artist and his love music and he's putting all that voodoo and witchcraft in there. You listening to it. You done fell in love with him. You thinking about him when you with your husband. That's why I tell folks, turn that junk off. What we supposed to listen to? What you need to listen to something for? Listen to a heartbeat. What you supposed to be? What? What are you talking about? Let's go. Oh, I got to set the mood at a button. But you pattern it after, see, the, it, and that puts the devil in the details. I talked about it in part eight of the Truth Behind Hip Hop. You are really putting that artist in the bed with you. That's the prayer they pray when they're sending their music out. You got a three-way going on. Spiritually. I preach, man. Never tell your husband he is not a good man. Never. Something wrong with you. 
Don't say that. Oof. Amen. <laughs> Y'all still there? Is everybody still? <laughs> Don't tell him he's not a good man. He may not do good things all the time. That does not make him a bad man. Amen. The Bible even called men upright, and they had failures. Yeah, so you don't want to speak to him as if you have assessed a condition in him, because that's not your place. If you sense a condition in him, you take that to God. Take it to God and let God disturb his conscience about it. And I promise you, he'll be looking for help just because of the prayers you pray. Oh, I need some amens, women. Yeah, so don't say he's not a good man. Don't tell him he's not a good father, a good husband, a good pro provider, or a good priest, etc. Never say that. You may feel it. He may feel it. But you encourage him. No, 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 no. Yeah, I... I no, if you're not a good man, then something's wrong with my decision. That's the way you have to look at it. Amen? So you never tell him that. You always encourage him. I promise you, he'll get better through your prayers. Amen. Y'all, boy, EX Ministries owes a lot to my wife praying. Because that's the only way she could handle me, through prayers. Amen. I needed him because she knew anything that would happen with me had to be associated with some spiritual warfare or some witchcraft. Just because of what I had to do and who I was. And so she handled it in prayer. Huh? Never came to check me and, you know, I like that. <laughs> I had to have a little hood in that now. I want to be intelligent when she has to be, but I need a little, ooh, that sister girl. But she never used them powers on me, though. The hood powers. I ain't never got that. She prays for me. Amen. Because if you know it's warfare, if you know it's spiritual, then why would you try to handle it in the natural? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you have to be ready to pray for your, your husband. Amen. Amen. You tell the devil, no, I see a good man when I see him. You speak that. No, I see a good man. Well, he failed, though. He failed in y'all. No, I see a good man. And I'm going to stand on what I'm saying. And believe God. Proverbs 27 and 15, ooh, like a unending dropping on a day of rain is a bitter-tongued woman. You ever tried to sleep with that dropping outside the window? Just bleep, bleep. I mean, you got to get up and do something about it. You just got to do something about it. Well, that's how, they, that's how a man feels when you're just bitter-tongued. Bitter tongue. Why would you talk to your man like that? Number three, never tell your husband everything. Every thought that comes in your head, you don't need to speak it. You are an emotional woman. What you say today, you may not feel like that in five days. Maybe, yeah, I mean, so be careful what you say. You're not going to always feel that way. That's why the Bible is specific and it tells a woman not to divorce a man. He says, don't do it. And if you do it, stay single. Why? Because you're going to change your mind and want him back. I say this on YouTube. I don't care. God said it for that reason. You're going to change your mind. You're mad. You're angry. You'll make decisions based on that. So you can't say everything you're feeling. 
because you may not feel that way in eight minutes. Because you're a woman. Amen. And it never stops. I've been married 30 years. You know, it, it never stops. The emotional part. You're going to always be that way. Yeah, when you're young, you're going to say dumb stuff. Get a little older, you're going to think dumb stuff. Then you get old, <laughs> then you get a little older and the change start happening. Yeah, everybody got to adjust to that. It just, it never stops. So you don't want to make decisions based on feelings. And you know you crazy. You hated him 17 minutes ago. 17 minutes later, you in love like y'all just met. And that's why you don't act on that. Because then you done got other folks involved. They still mad. Oh, he's okay. You know, he just, he's okay. Why is my blood pressure up and you chilling with him? So you don't do, just don't do it. Don't call your mama. Oh! oh, I felt the anointing when I said that. I spoke to someone. Don't call your mama. She's bitter. She's a boomer. She's been through stuff. Society has just conditioned her brain. She don't understand. All she going to say is she told you to never marry him. You want to hear that? Why are you talking to her? We on our way to come get y'all. No, you not. You know she ain't come. She don't have no gas for that. Let's be just talking. Mm -hmm, we on our way. We going to come get y'all. We getting y'all out of there. We going to get, we going to rescue. We get y'all. You done got her all out. You in the bed with him that night. And she's dialing 911. Don't call her. Proverbs 21 and 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from what? Girl, if you can shut up, you will keep your soul from trouble. Oh, because that talking troubles the soul. Oh, you done talked and talked. Husband, and, oh, you done just, I mean, I have seen women wreck their homes, ruin their children's lives because they can't shut up. It's a spirit. Many waters of talking, just tongue, just water. Shut up! And you'll keep trouble away. Man, every I mean, get in the church. Cool, the church is good. Good word, good music, good people. Now you're in here causing foolishness. Just can't shut up. So you don't need to say everything that's on your mind, amen? And that's not just with your husband, that's just life. When you, ooh, when you're on your monthly, just don't talk to nobody. I got a month where I don't say nothing. That's one week in this month. I don't say nothing to nobody. <laughs> Number four, never tell him that you wish you hadn't gotten married. That's one of those things that you can't take back. That lingers. You never tell him that, that you wish you hadn't gotten married. Especially when you guys got married against the will of family and others. Now you sided with them. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 21. Death and life are in the power of the what? The tongue. And they that love it shall eat what? Shall eat the fruit. Thereof. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. Watch your, Look at somebody and say, watch your, watch your tongue. You can't say, you just can't say you wish you hadn't gotten married. Even if you feel that way, 
Even if it's an extended feeling over a period of time, just don't say it. Keep working to make it better. Amen. Because what you ultimately, amen, what you ultimately want to happen in a relationship, you don't just want God to heal the relationship. You want God to heal y'all. So you don't want to take yourself out of that and mess something else up. So God heal us in this marriage. And if you both heal, y'all going to want to stay, stay together. Amen. And single women, you ought to be praying that too. God heal me so I won't be rep a repellent spiritual raid you just just running them off that one lady she, she used to go here and she told me one time said see i got the reputation i just turn men down i just i've turned so many men down i just keep turning them down in the church i keep turning them down and so i said yeah they all married with families and stuff and all that. And, uh, Okay, miss, turn them down. A, mm -hmm, that's your reputation. Okay. I guess she's still turning them down. Still single. Mm-hmm. Or something, just you need to pray, God, get this off me. If it's something blocking, if it's something in me, if it's something that needs to change, Lord, I don't want anything getting in the way of what you want for me. That needs to be your prayer. Amen? And number five, you never tell your husband he is not as blank as another man. Woo! Especially your father. You don't compare him to no one. Because no one should compare to him. Oh, see, single women, you ought to be clapping just because you know one day I'm going to sit in that church and he's going to do the ten things. And I'm going to be in the fold. But you, you learn this stuff. He is not as blank as another man. You don't compare your husband to nobody. I wish you was, you know, so-and-so damn they, you know, he, he kind of, you know, you don't do that. That's tacky. Amen. And in his mind, he's thinking, well, won't you just go be with him? <laughs> Amen. And that's when he go to work and the scoochie lurking <laughs> around the cubicle <laughs> you know she will slither under a chair and just pop up <laughs> it's just a demonic periscope she just mm -hmm. oh he looks sad today let me go talk to him you feeling all right, Ray, Ray? I'm doing good. I see. I mean, you look a little different today. You look like you're kind of sad. You okay? Amen. Can I talk real to y'all today? Okay. You know that's how they do. Amen. So, you know, say the right thing. Don't be comparing him to anybody else. Proverbs 15 and 2. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of a fool poureth out what? Foolish. Foolish. This is hilarious to me. Wanted a good woman, able to clean, cook, sow, dig worms, and clean fish. Must have boat and motor. Please send picture of boat and moat. He don't care what she look like. Can she clean cook so dig work and clean fish? <laughs> that is so funny to me. <laughs> Men are ego driven. If you cannot feed his ego, then you won't have his attention long. But all men God created us that way. There's something about him giving us dominion over everything that gives us an ego. Like we want to feel like somebody. Amen. And that's not a sin either for a man to feel good about himself. That's why God gave him a help meet to help him meet his expectations. 
Amen. Oh, somebody ought to be clapping, especially the ones that's in training. In training to help meet. Amen. He's not, oh, if he walked up to you and he was all and everything that he should be, then he don't need you. Yeah, I'm talking to the single women in here now. Yeah, if he's, I mean, if he's good to go, ready to go, then he don't need you. There's going to be some things that you're going to help him with. Oh, no women want, they don't want no fixer up. You, you got your image, oh, you got that piece of paper, that old script you've been carrying around, paper done turned all brown. Lines all, just old nasty food all on it. You done carried that around, trying to find that guy. And every other guy that had the potential to even become that guy has passed you by. But if you cannot feed his ego, then you won't have his attention long. Men are, what? Men are, look at somebody say private. Men are private. See, the internet has ruined so many relationships. Because men are private. Men are private. I mean, they'll confide, in, men will confide in a roach if it promises it won't tell nobody. <laughs> yeah, men want somebody to talk to, but they, they need a guarantee that it stays private. So when you picking up the phone and talking and telling his business, you don't even have to be telling his business. You can be on the phone talking to somebody else's business. And he's thinking about his business. You call your mama about him, he ain't telling you nothing. Because I'm going to tell you what men hate, what we hate, walking around in an uncomfortable atmosphere where you done talk to folks and that ain't looking funny. Yeah, that's why you don't want to go see your, your folks. He don't want to go see them. He don't want to hang, be around your friends. and He don't want to be around none of them because he know you've been talking. I know I'm preaching. Men are private. If you cannot keep his business, then you won't keep his attention long. Amen. This is where all these witches, see, these witches know that. All these new age witch, women witches, that's their lure. They get a man to confide in them their business, and they can operate on them. They can do witchcraft on them. Yeah, so they're just waiting on you to shut your man off so that at work or wherever they are, they can do this witchcraft. Online, whatever, they can do this witchcraft on them and get his mind. Now he thinks he's confiding in somebody, but what he's really doing is bringing a spell into your home. That's what they do. I'm telling you what they do. Yeah, we've, I've seen a lot of them saved and that used to be into that stuff. They tell me all this stuff. So all this information I have about it, these are folks that used to actually do it. They lure. Number three, men are attracted to dependency. Ooh, the damsel in distress. The woman that just can't do right without it. Can't make it happen. Got to have him. Men are looking for that. Men are attracted to dependency. If you don't depend on him or need him, then you won't keep his attention long. That's pretty cut and dry, isn't it? Yeah, yeah he needs, he don't need to know you can handle everything without him. Then what use is he? He's attracted to dependency. Not independency, dependency. Amen? Yeah. Finally, men are visual. If you don't care about your looks, then you won't keep his attention long. <laughs> I know folks preach against makeup and this and that and this. I don't. Uh huh. The presentation matters. Don't you? Amen. Amen. So he don't need to always see you in a bonnet. Bonnet when he come home. Bonnet when he go to work. 
Bought it when you go to the store. Bought it, bought it, bought it, bought it. Then he look online and all these old made up beautiful pictures. Why the bonnet online? Why your AIG don't have no bonnets? Why, is I, why am I getting all the bonnet action? Hugging him and just crumpling, crumpling. All in the ear, just loud. Crump, crump, crump. I'm like, ooh, oh. I didn't sign up for this. You didn't look like this when I married you. Take the bonnet off for him. And here's the crazy part. You put the bonnet on so your hair will look good. Why he getting the... <laughs> that don't make any sense. That's what I'm saying. Do a photo shoot with the bonnet. You that confident and like it, do a photo. I'll see, you ain't doing a photo. Why you? Why he had to see it? Why does he have to see that and you won't take pictures in it? Somebody bring out a photo. Oh. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Then he come over work. Hey. I forgot that. That's some other stuff I got to do. I wasn't finished with my work yet. Why would you look good for everyone else except him? Ephesians 5 and 22, and I'm closing with this. You wives, this is scripture, will submit to your husbands as you do the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of his body, the church. This is a deep comparison right here. That's how the husband is head of the wife. He gave his life to be her savior as the church submits to Christ. So you wives must submit to your husbands in everything. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. We don't need questions, do we? That's what we do at Heroes. I usually do questions afterwards, but Everybody good? You welcome Eris and everybody else. Appreciate you. No, Eris is in. She, 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 amen. She getting it together. Amen. All right. Keep working on it and let God work on you. And I'm telling y'all, God, God's favor is on us in this hour. All you have to do is tap into it. I promise you, he's still with us. He's still with us. He never left us. Amen? Amen. All right. Huh? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, I thought you was going to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'll pray. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. Ten things. You know, this stuff is hard depending on how you were raised. Most of us was raised against all of this. <laughs> and a lot of, most of us didn't see any of this. We saw the five things you never say. We saw 30 things, 30 things. It wasn't even five, it was 30. 30 things you never say <laughs> to your husband. That's what we saw. And so we want to make sure that, hey, this is what the word says. So we want to abide by the word. We don't ever want to get in our own way. Amen? We want the word to lead our way. So everyone just bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this word, God. I thank you, God, for this group of women, this group of people, and all that are hearing this message, Lord. I just thank you, Father God, that you've given us insight on how we should behave, better behave ourselves, God. This is where it starts. We can look at all of the uh, immoral actions of our world and the LGBT and 
the men that don't want to be men, the women that don't want to be women, the men that are attracted to men, women that are attracted to women, the, the child pornography, the pedophilia, just all of the transgender and just wicked, wicked, wicked things that go against your word. But Father God, the root of all of that is this right here. Someone messed up your formula. Someone messed up your plan. Someone didn't do what your word said. Someone didn't abide in it. Someone said the five things that they should never say. And someone heard it and was hurt by it, was devastated. Trauma came upon them. Father God, and that is why our world is the way it is. But God, I just thank you because you've chosen this place, ABC, God. You've chosen these that are here to speak truth in this hour, in an hour of lies, in an hour of strong delusion, in the last hour. You've chosen us to hear truth and change our ways, God, to line up with your truth, with the truth of your word. So help us, God, to apply it. Help us, Father God, to obey it. Help us, God, to honor you in our actions so that we can do the things that you would have us do, Father God, so that we can eliminate the dysfunction, the trauma, and all these other things and abide in your word and your truth in this hour. In Jesus' name, we pray. And Father, we just come against every spell, every family curse, generational curse, even the curse of the eyes where we observe something. And Father God, it just puts something in us to cause us to sabotage relationships or even avoid certain things just because of what we saw, the trauma we experienced. Father God, we come against every spell, every trauma, every event, Father God, that would cause or that would hinder our progress and stop us from making better choices and good decisions. Father God, we come against all of that and we stand on your truth. Believe in God that we'll be able to rightfully apply your word and change things in this hour. Change our hearts, change our minds, everything that needs to be changed as we submit to you in this hour, God. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, give it up for our pastor again. Thank you so much, pastor. We appreciate it so very, very much. And I can't remember the first time he did this message, but I've learned every time. And after 30 years of marriage, I still got to do it. And I need it. And when he told me what he was going to do, I was like, I need it. I need it. Because I got to keep doing it. And I got to keep reminding myself that, again, this is not about me. This is about, this is about me doing what I'm supposed to do and what I was created to do by God. And that's to serve my husband. And to be there for him and reverence him and honor him. And it is an honor to do it. Because God has selected me, and just like he selected all of you, and even those that are single, you are chosen, you are a wife, you will be a wife. And in that, when that time comes, you will be able to do it as well. And so praise God for you getting these lessons before you get a husband, so amen. Because it is work, it is literal work and thoughts in being married. It's not just you get married, okay, we good, we married, but you work at it. It's a job, it's a it's a thought, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. You're thinking about it. And you're thinking of how, not how, but I got to stay married. And I got to be good. And I got to do right. And I got to remember him. And not just about me, but I got to put him first. That's a literal thought. And you have to think it. But God created you to do it. So you're going to do it. And it's through his power. It's through God's power. So even after 30 years, I'm telling you, it ain't me. It's God. Is God keeping my mouth shut and I'm willing to allow him to shut my mouth for me to be quiet and not say everything I'm feeling and thinking and to three, four o'clock in the morning, get on my knees because I don't know what's going on. He don't tell me everything. He don't tell me everything he's doing, everything he's planning, everywhere he's going. He don't. But I know that obviously what God has called him to do, there's prayer to be had. And so I got children and they need prayer. And I got a home and it needs prayer. And I got laundry to do and I want to do it and that needs prayer. <laughs> And I got to go get groceries and cook some food because I don't know how to cook, but that need prayer. And trust me, it's getting done. Like I say all the time, God will do it if you trust him. He got you.
He's just saying, do you trust me with it? I got you. If you trust me because I made you, I created you, I put you here, I put you to do this. But if you trust me with it, I got you. You ain't got to worry about it if you just trust me because I got you. And I made you a woman and it's all in you. So if you just trust me, I got you. It didn't it ain't take no thought. It just take a prayer. God, I trust you. I lean out on my own understanding. But in all of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you. You're going to direct my path. You're going to show me how to do this. And like I tell my husband, I, tell him, I ain't never done this before. I ain't never been married before. I ain't never had three children before. I never had one married and gone off and one is 25 living house and then one is 15 and need homeschooling and then laundry and church and stuff. I ain't never done this before. So you got to have mercy on me because I'm learning. I'm steady learning. And then my body changed. And now I'm going through this. And then this one happened. And then my daddy died. And it, I don't know how to do this, but God does. And God has a plan. So guess what? Let me trust his plan. I don't know what his plan is. If I had the plan, I'd have ruined it day one. It'd have been ruined. It'd have been done because I don't know. I know nothing. And just like Pastor said, I only know what I've seen on TV and on movies. Don't want that either. But I know God has a plan. Where I am right now, God has a plan. I don't know, but I'm going to trust the one that does. Like Pastor, I would say, you're going to trust the one that has the blimp view. God has the blimp view. We just got the parade view. Made it by men, band, a uh, car with the woman in the car waving. We seeing it event by event. God sees it from the beginning. He saw my life from the beginning, and he sees where it's going to end. And hopefully that's the, mm. but he sees it. And all the in-between, he's going to work it out. He's going to make a way. He's going to open doors. He's going to continue to do what he needs to do in my life. I just got to let him. And so that's just me saying yes to your will, Lord. Whatever your will is. I didn't ask to be no first lady, no pastor's wife, whatever you want to call it. I did not ask for this. I did not grow up say I want to be this. Matter of fact, we went to church so much. I said, when I grow up, I don't want to go to church. We're going to go to church on Sunday, and that's about it. But the, I had a plan. Sure did. But right about 19, the Lord said, no. Uh-uh. And so, but it was a choice. And nobody held a gun to my head. Nobody made me. It was my choice. I want to be married. And I want to have a husband. I want to be able to do this. Did not know what I was doing when I was doing it. But yet and still through it all, God had a plan. God took care of it. And I, as I stand here right now, if I tell you one more time, I'll tell you again. After 30 years, it's been God. G-O-D. Not Sabatha, not G. Craig. It's been G-O-D on high. That's been taking care of this. And trust me, he can do the same for you. He will if you trust him. If you take yourself out of the equation. Even though you're a very important part, like Pastor said, you're a very important part. And God has pow empowered you. And with the power that you have as being a woman and a wife in your home, you have power. But God, I give all that to you. Show me how to use it. Show me how to deal with it. Show me how to work it. Show me how not to work. Show me when to sit down. Show me when to be quiet. Show me when to stop. Show me when... My dreams are just dreams, and they will never be reality. <laughs> Show me when I need to just live in what you have me in right now. And if you never do nothing else, I'm glad, I'm grateful, and I'm blessed. <laughs> Show me that, Lord, and help me take my eyes off other people, off other things. And, Lord, help me to just be content in who I am. And everything else, if I seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, all this other stuff you're going to add to me anyway. Let me just stay in your kingdom, though. Let me stay in my Jesus bubble with you, and we're going to be good. And so, amen. Just trust in the Lord, ladies. Just trust in the Lord. Even in your singleness and single ladies, we're having a meeting, and I have to get with Pastor after the 31st to know when we're going to meet. But we're going to sit down and talk. All the single ladies from 18 to the oldest, probably Miss Rosie, whoever, we're going to sit down and have a conversation and just talk and just go through, you know, just conversation. I know there's questions. Many of you have come to me one-on-one -on -one about things. And so we want to sit down together and get a general consensus and just come to knowledge and wisdom and understanding. So look out for that. But that'll be after the 31st. It'll be sometime probably in November, December. So.